It's a time to switch your salt to a salt substitute. Oh, that sounds horrible. We have Journal Club today. Okay, Journal Club. JC. JZ. No, no, not Jay-Z. Although Jay-Z did oh. win the Dr. Dre Global Impact Award this way. Congratulations, Jay-Z. He was a little angry about Beyonce never getting album of the year ever in her career. He had a little rant on stage about that. Sounds like Jay-Z got a little salty. He was salty, actually. All right, this is Talking with Docs. I'm Dr. Paul Salzo. Dr. Paul Ming. And today, we're going to be looking over a journal that was published in the New England Journal of Medicine. Do you prefer New England clam chowder or Boston clam chowder? I don't eat clam chowder anymore. I think they both would be good. I think they both would be good. You had to pick. Had to no, pick. wait. New England clam chowder and Boston clam chowder are the same. It's Manhattan clam chowder. It's probably, a different one. I'd probably stick with New England. The cream-based one? I think so. I thought with your vegan, no, you'd want the tomato-based one from Manhattan. I think they all have clams. It doesn't matter. Let's go. Have, have the cream. Have the chowder without the clams. Yeah. Pick out the clams oh, wow. if you had to. Effect of salt substitution on cardiovascular events and death. Okay. Okay, so A, if you have an issue with salt, leave a comment. A lot of people say, oh, salt doesn't matter, salt doesn't affect your blood pressure, salt. The overwhelming body of scientific literature says salt is a problem. There's a very small percentage of people that can have tons of salt and have no effect, but the average person, it definitely affects you. Talk to any cardiologist or nephrologist right. who is dealing with the end stages of this problem. So please don't leave those comments. Right. Just what you got to, got to. We realize that some people who do, do walk around with hypotension yes. and low blood pressure often encourage to pots. put salt, to have salt in your diet. Yes. But for the general population and the vast majority of people, salt, you should try and reduce your salt intake. Yes. So this is a randomized study, but okay. it's a cluster randomization as opposed to randomizing individuals. Okay. What's, so a, what's a cluster what's a randomization? Cluster? It's a cluster. It's okay. A cluster. So a cluster randomization is where you take groups and randomize them to certain things. Like for example, if I wanted to see the effects of uh, kale versus chicken wings on an athlete's performance, I would take a series of hockey teams and randomize different teams to that would be an interesting chicken study, wings. To see the pros and cons of both. You don't have to do it. You know the chicken wing teams are going to win. <laughs> Hands down. No. I mean, you don't often go. Wait, after a hockey game, you're going to go for beer and wings, not kale and chardonnay. Oh, kale chips. Kale and chardonnay. Okay. No. So that's kind of a cluster. You randomize groups. Okay. okay? So this is a cluster run, randomization of some villages in China. Some, like 600 villages okay. and 21,000 people. So this is a very, very large study. Yes. So what were the inclusion criteria? What kind of patients are being enrolled in this study? So the people that were enrolled in this study were people who had had a stroke before yep. or uh, were 60 years or older with poorly controlled blood pressure. Essentially high risk for a stroke. Okay, so, people, so this is a group, these are groups of people who are at high risk for a stroke okay. or a cardiovascular event. All right. All right, not just your average person who's exercising all the time. Okay, like and how, people, how long did they follow them? They followed them for, oh, I can't remember that. Just short of five years, I think. Five years. They yeah, followed which them is for, a long time. It's a long time, and then they looked, the primary outcome was incidence of stroke, yep. and the secondary outcome was all other cardiovascular events. Yeah, and then the third one was death, I think. Death. Yeah, so three events. And now the key point here is the, the um, these were the participants were not blinded to whether they were receiving salt or a salt substitute. Okay. Okay. So that's another thing. What is a salt substitute? Salt is sodium chloride. The salt substitutes are still sodium chloride, but they've removed about 25% of the sodium chloride and replaced it with potassium chloride. It's like low salt salt. Low salt salt. Right. Okay. So 25% reduction in this study. And, yeah. and you probably can't appreciate much taste difference, to be honest. With you. Apparently not. I don't yeah. know if I've ever tried it. I don't think I have it purposefully, or maybe in a restaurant or something. But yeah, yeah, apparently you can't taste it. I'm not a big salt person. I don't add salt to any of my food personally. But I add a lot less, but I do like salt. I like the, yeah. That's why you're so salty. Yeah, I like So, the taste. what did they find? Okay, what did they find? You tell me. Yes, there was a reduction in the incidence of stroke. Okay. okay. There was a statistically significant reduction in the incidence of stroke in the group that took the salt substitute. Okay. A primary outcome. Okay, so less strokes if you swapped out some salt. Right. Secondary outcome was there was a reduction in sec other cardiovascular events right. in the group that had the salt substitute. So primarily heart attacks, obviously, yeah. but okay. And number three? Death. Lower incidence of death. Lower incidence of death okay. in, in the group that had the salt substitute. Okay. So in this 
cluster randomization where the people weren't blinded to what they were taking yep. and they were all high risk for stroke because they had a stroke already or because they have uncontrolled hypertension. Yeah. Reducing the salt intake by using a salt substitute did appear to reduce the chance of something bad happening. We'll provide a link to this article for those of you interested in diving a little bit deeper into the details. Okay, so what's the take home message? So if I'm just living my life, I think I got a salt shaker. Put the salt shaker away. That's my okay. take home okay. message. Okay, so and certainly there are a lot in of studies general, that say reducing that yeah. is a good idea. This, okay. in addition to a lot of other stuff I've read. But Paul, I can't. I cannot put the salt okay. shaker away. Then I think it is worth considering using a salt substitute. There are some risks. Okay, so so as someone who maybe I really obsess about my kidney function, okay. and you're telling me, Brad, I want you to take all this extra potassium, and I'm, yeah. I'm worried about potassium because right. I've heard that sometimes potassium can kill you. Right. If you have problems metabolizing potassium, such as someone who has some renal failure, right, then I would not add extra potassium in the diet. Okay, so if you with kidney disease or kidney problems. Don't take it because that could raise your potassium and make you hyperkalemic, right. which can affect your heart and potentially be fatal. Or if you're taking a medication that also raises your potassium, you should not take this. Right. Um, you should always check with your like doctor. Like diuretics, a lot of diuretics swap out the potassium. And so essentially, they are being your, your salt right. substitute. Um, that's how they work. Having said that, they did look for hyperkalemia, which is too high of potassium. Yes. And they found that it did not have a significant effect on hyperkalemia in the groups. Is yes. one side of it. I did notice that the number was a little bit higher in the swap out group yep. it was not significant not statistically significant yep. but it was a little bit higher uh, but they didn't do serial blood work all the time to check right. it closely so that's a limitation um so those are things you have to be careful for when you're taking a potassium uh, instead of your doctor. sodium and your salt so talk to your doctor about that the other limitations of this study well this was these were groups of people who are at high risk so can we extrapolate this to the general population yeah. we don't know the serum electrolytes are not measured very frequently so right. we don't know about the potassium so well um, and the participants were aware of what they were taking. They weren't blinded. We always like blinded randomized trials. So you think they could have been, could have been influenced to say, well, yeah. I must feel better. I must have a lower risk of stroke if I'm taking no. potassium salt. Smart like, I get it. Pants. No, they might have been like, oh, I don't want to take this potassium stuff. I'm going to just cut down my salt altogether. Right. Okay. My or maybe I'm going to exercise more because now I'm thinking about strokes more. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. If only the people who live in the villages in China know the true answer to that. Okay, so, so like we talk about in a lot of our videos, when we talk about things that are lifestyle modifications, is this something that you're going to look into maybe? Or? Well, I personally, I, I don't use a lot of salt. I only like use Like none? I, I never add salt to Ever? It. Never. If it's in a meal that I'm preparing, uh -huh. like the other day, um, I made some hummus. Yeah. And it called for adding hummus. salt to it. So uh -huh. I had to add the salt to the, right. to the thing before I put in the food processor. Okay. Actually, I forgot it. And my wife tasted it and said, you forgot the salt. I was yeah. like, oh yeah, I forgot okay. the salt. Then I added the salt. But I would never order food or cook food and then add salt to it. I don't know. So, so when you have a steak, you would never put salt on a steak? Uh, spices. I like spices. I don't but eat not, a lot of steak, not salt. to be honest. Okay. I, I eat very little steak. But I do eat steak. Or I, I do barbecue for the kids. Yeah. Um, and I, I like spice. Yeah. I'll put spice on but it. But not salt. Not salt. However, I use seasoning salt, which probably has quite a bit of salt it does. in it. Yes. But I generally will not add salt to my meal if i have a meal for me i don't have i never reach for the salt shake i just don't pepper i like okay i like it both are you eat salt you add salt to your stuff? not very much no because i'm aware like i think if there were no health consequences i would add more so you used to use salt before you sort of educate yourself yeah, that's say. the thing about this channel we've changed our lifestyle so much we're actually going to do a video on all the things that we've changed since we started doing this channel yeah. eight years ago not too we just don't talk about it i'm we wearing actually, compression socks right now I'm not, <laughs> but I have changed a lot of my, I've taken supplements that I never thought I would take before. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. Now, you know, if you do have an issue with high blood pressure or a risk of stroke, or that's on the landscape for you, consider talking to your doctor about maybe swapping on a salt substitute for a slightly higher potassium, less yeah. sodium, salt. And if you like this video, please like it, subscribe to our channel. My recommendation, we just reduce your salt altogether. Don't Love even it. go for the substitute. But. Love it. Uh, and remember, you are in charge of your own health and how much salt you take in. Check out other long-form content over on YouTube and we'll see you next time. Remember, you are in charge of your own health.